Yes, we all know that you love Aladdin, that you grew up on Aladdin, that you love Robin Williams, and nothing will ever top the original. We all know you, that one person that I know is going to comment something on this video, or is saying something right now in their head that this cannot possibly beat the original. We get it. We know. I thought a princess could go anywhere. Not this princess. Do you trust me? So hello everybody, as you guys can see already, we are going to be talking about the live action version of Aladdin. And before I say that, I am Aiden Kosick, and it is a pleasure to be here and talk to you guys about what is sure to be not a controversial film at all, Aladdin directed by Guy Ritchie. And why I say controversial is because we have all been on Twitter for the past couple months when these trailers dropped with the weird Ghibli Will Smith genie. I'm sure I was just as skeptical as you guys are clicking on this review wanting to see what I think about it right now. But guys, I'm here to tell you this movie is charming as heck in such a delightful film. Like I was saying, I went into this thing so skeptical. The marketing was all weird and off for me and I was worried that this thing would feel like a really bad Guy Ritchie film, not like a Man from Uncle, which is highly underrated, but more so along the lines of something like that really weird Charlie Hunnam King Arthur movie that came out a while back. I'm sure that other directors could have done this and maybe they could have done it better, but something about Guy Ritchie's sense of style and the way that he visualizes things and brings it to the big screen. It was just something that his flair really added to this movie to me. There's definitely scenes in the movie where you go, yeah, that's a Guy Ritchie thing. Oh, the slow motion shot? Yeah, that's a Guy Ritchie shot. And one thing about this movie that I wasn't sure was how true is it going to stay to the original animated version from Disney. And it stays pretty true. It definitely takes its liberties here and there. Some are positives, some are negatives. For instance, no spoilers, but there is this handmaiden to Princess Jasmine who, for the beginning of the movie, I was saying, okay, she's not really going to be in the next scene. Okay, we can just leave her behind. Oh, oh, she's she's coming back. Oh, she's going to be a plot point in the movie. Okay, I don't, I wasn't a fan of her in this movie, let's just say. And that kind of has to deal with some of the comedy in this movie. A lot of the comedy in this movie is hit or miss. What doesn't work just falls flat and it's kind of like, okay, let's move on, forget about that. I didn't need it, but what does work in this movie is great stuff. Abu, such a cute little monkey. He's like the next baby Groot. I just, I want an Abu so bad right now. Guys, Will Smith as the genie. I wasn't sure what to think. We all don't want a rehash of Robin Williams. Let that be its own thing. But can Will Smith bring something to this role? And not just play Will Smith for the majority of this movie, but... Bring something to the role that Robin couldn't, that only Will can, and expand on what Robin did. And Will really does that. Now, I'm not saying that I prefer his genie to Robin. They're two completely different genies. Just like every Joker we've ever had is a completely different Joker from the last one. But what Will does in this movie is such a delight and such a tribute and homage to Robin. It's so much fun. And every time that he's on the screen, you just have the stupidest dumb smile on your face the whole time. The other guy who I wasn't sure about going into this movie from the trailers that I was really surprised by in the movie was Marwan Kenzari, who plays Jafar. And in the trailer, I was kind of like, okay, he doesn't look like some weird creepy pedophile with a long beard. Is he going to be menacing for the movie? And He's not that creepy, weird, pedophilic Jafar that we got in the original one. He's like a con man, and it's really a Guy Ritchie kind of take. And for the most part, I really enjoyed his character. Towards the third act of the movie, it got way more mustache-twirling kind of villain rather than someone who was layered. But I still appreciated what Marwan brought to this role. But Naomi Scott. Guys... Ever since I was a little kid and I saw Lemonade Mouth on Disney Channel, if you remember Lemonade Mouth, 
you have to like and subscribe to this video. I don't care. We're best friends right now. Lemonade Mouth, best, most underrated Disney Channel movie ever, other than Minutemen. But she was the standout of that movie then, and she's one of the standouts of this movie now. I can't wait to see where her career goes. She's already taking all these big roles. She was fantastic in this movie. For the most part, Aladdin's a love story, and I really bought into the Jasmine aspect of this thing. I really bought into her wanting to find somebody to love, but have it be the right person. On to the title character of the movie. This is where I have more of my problems with the movie. Mena Masoud, I don't want to butcher that. I believe that's how you say his name. Great guy. I just watched him on Collider Live. All my Collider Live fans, what's up? Great interview with him. He's such a great, fun, nice man. But I just couldn't buy him as Aladdin in this movie. Something about him just felt it's too shiny to be this riffraff street rat, diamond in the rough that we all know. And it's not even just due to a makeup and hairstyling aspect of this movie. It's more so the way that he plays the character. He kind of just plays it as this Prince Charming CW character rather than a gritty Guy Ritchie riffraff street rat. There are some more technical aspect things of this movie that I also thought was a little weird. You know, a lot of people don't, some people don't have accents. Some people do have accents. There's random accents, Scottish accents, British accents, English accents. I don't really get what the canon or the how everything fit together, but who cares? Some of the CG is kind of hit or miss here and there. And for the most part, this movie does rely on the music for the original Aladdin. Nine times out of ten, when the music is introduced in this movie, it's so jarring. It just felt like... Oh, y'all remember this? Y'all remember this one from the animated one, right? We, we put it in the movie, right? Remember? You guys, you guys love this song, remember? And it didn't really work. There was only two times in this whole movie where it just really flowed into the song. Other times it felt like some producer on the set was like, we need the thing from the cartoon. Put that in here now. Drop that plot point. But guys, overall, Aladdin, I wasn't expecting much out of this movie. Such a delight. I really enjoyed this movie. Please go see it. It's not the best movie I've seen all year, but it's such a delight and a step in the right direction for Guy Ritchie. 8.5 out of 10 is what I'm going to give this movie. So entertaining, so much fun, such a great tribute to the original. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button down below. Also comment, are you guys looking forward to Aladdin? What's your favorite Aladdin song? All that great stuff. Please be sure to hit the social media links in the description below so that we guys can stay up to date with everything going on with me and my personal life and hit the notification bell so that we guys can stay up to date with everything going on on this YouTube channel. And just thank you guys so much.